Welcome to Shabbat in your home. Yet another wonderful episode <laughs> with my wonderful family. We don't have my dad with us this time because he's traveling and getting new songs coming out. Yes. But we have a very special guest that is going to be sharing with us this evening that I'm excited about. But we're going to begin with uh, lighting the candles and taking the elements. So if you would like to follow along, you know, you can get your candles, get your bread, your wine, your juice, gather your family together. And as I encourage you every week, if you're single, you're by yourself, the Lord is with you. It's not cliche. So grab the elements. And as you partake, the Lord will meet you there in your home by yourself. Mm -hmm. It was something that I did, you know, when I was by myself. I still celebrated Shabbat every Friday mm -hmm. and I enjoyed it. Yep. So it's, um, I do it's, too. When, it's, you're, when your dad's gone and um, I'm all alone with the Lord and I still celebrate Shabbat with the Lord. That's right. But <laughs> even when he did travel and it was just you, me and Joel, yes. the three of us, we still did it. Just oh, the three yeah. of us because we, we knew we had to sow mm -hmm. my dad into the nations and it meant sometimes mm -hmm. we weren't always together as a family. But when we were together as a family, he always made up for it and made us feel loved and special, of course. But it was um, just the, the table element, bringing mm -hmm. us all together, such a special time every week. Mm -hmm. And so my, my wife, Malky, if you missed the announcement, she is uh, carrying my next son that's coming into the world in <laughs> August. <laughs> so that's why she is glowing. <laughs> she... Uh, we're so blessed and it's a true miracle in our household. If you can go back to the episode, I can't remember which one it is, but <laughs> we just were able to share how we went through a, a wilderness season where we wanted more children. And seven years later, the Lord just said, boom, <laughs> now is the time. So his we're, perfect time. Mm -hmm. It was his perfect timing. So sweetie, if you want to sure. light the candles and Baruch Atadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu Lehiotor Legoim, V'natan Lanu Et Yeshua Meshichinu Or HaOlam. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. You have sanctified us with your word. You commanded us to be a light unto the nations, and you gave us Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah, who is the light of the world. Amen. Amen. And as we lift up the cup, we remember the blood of mm -hmm. Yeshua, Jesus, that was poured out for us, that removed all of our, our sin and removed all of the shame mm -hmm. associated with that. He remembers our sins no longer. So therefore, you are a new creation in Jesus. And on that night, he lifted up the cup and he said this prayer in Hebrew, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei pri hagafen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit of the vine. Yeshua, thank you for your yes, sacrifice. Lord. Thank you that you counted it a joy to lay down your life, you said, for your family. We are so grateful that we are included in the family of the Father as one. And it's in your name, Yeshua, we pray. Amen. the bread. He lifted it up towards heaven and he said, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the bread from the land. Yeshua, thank you for coming and offering uh, your life. Thank you that as you uh, gave of your life that you are bringing your family, that you brought us all together. Thank you for um, being the bread of life, that you are our provision. And every season, no matter what we're going through, we can call upon you, that you hear us and you answer us. And we thank you for this, for this evening. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. The 
Lord, we just thank you right now for this time. We thank you for my mom, who has a, a word that's really dear to her heart that she's studied and always um, just really felt impressed not on her heart to always share. So Lord, I just thank you for this time. May your word go forth, that every ear that hears it, Lord, I ask that the seed of the word would go deep. Lord, and we thank you for a great harvest, Lord. We thank you that lives will be changed tonight, Father. We thank you that everyone that watches this video, that they would be transformed, that they will realize that there is authority that they have in the name of Yeshua, that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow yes. and every tongue will confess that he alone, and we just thank you, we honor you, and we, we give you thanks for this evening in Yeshua's name. Amen. You know, one of the great memories that I have growing up, you always would have a place in the house or um, a room, like a prayer room. And my mom was always spending time in the Word. She would always have like a stack of books <laughs> about this high. She'd always have her Bible. And then she would have like also like a prayer book. And you were always just studying, studying, studying. And anytime like a neighbor or anything would go through something, you always had an encouraging word. And definitely no one messed with me and my brother in the neighborhood because <laughs> the authority that you would feel as a mother would come all over and like, not <laughs> my house. <laughs> but also the spiritual atmosphere. You know, my mom always set a tone in the house, uh, which you always will hear me share about that if you're going through something, check the temperature, check what is going on in your house. My mom always did a, a job to make sure that the worship was always playing, mm -hmm. I mean, regularly. It was like all day you had worship prayers and worship, mostly my dad, because it was... <laughs> oh, yeah, just, just my husband. Yeah. <laughs> but then at night, you would switch it up and you'd have a teaching tape. Remember tapes, cassette tapes? Cassette tapes are those things. It's got two holes, you put them, you hit play. Yes, I still use them. <laughs> she still has a yeah. tape player CD combo. Oh, yes. And she's got the worship blasting during the day <laughs> and then a, a teaching at night. And she's just always constantly getting all of this into her. And it was just always, you know, mm -hmm. as growing up as your son, always honor that because mm -hmm. quite regularly, not a lot of moms... Um, spend a lot of time in the Word. It's, but you could always tell where you spent all your time because when anything bad would happen mm -hmm. or if somebody needed help, like this was your source of information. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you took that position of authority in the Lord that Jesus gave to us when He came. It's written in, his, in Scripture. Uh, I, f I feel like sometimes uh, the word authority can come with a negative connotation because it gets abused. It gets used in a wrong way. Mm -hmm. But he's given us the authority mm -hmm. to carry out his word and to demonstrate who he is. Yes. So if you want to just take mm -hmm. it from here and take us through and share okay. what's on your heart. I will. Glad to. Um, yeah, I've always just been very hungry for, for the word and and uh, ever since I was a little girl, just been just crazy in love with the Lord and just couldn't get enough of him or <laughs> enough of his feeding on his word and just encouraging myself in the Lord. I want to um, share today as I was praying what to share today. I felt like the Lord wanted me to share about um, the authority that he's given us, his body, church, all of us together. And if we go to, um, if you have your Bibles, Luke 10, 19, Yeshua is saying, talking to his disciples, he says, Behold, I have given you authority and power, both of those words, not only authority, but he's given us his authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability to overcome all power that the enemy possesses, and nothing shall in any way harm you. This is a promise that he's given us. Now, when he's talking about serpents and scorpions, he's talking about 
um, spiritual things um, like demons, darkness, things of darkness. And uh, it's interesting that before my husband's uh, last recording that he did in Israel, the night before we left for Israel, when he did mm -hmm. Roar for Zion, that night a snake uh, went after my grandson. My grandson, Caleb, was running up the door. A snake went after it, tried to bite mm -hmm. him. Malky killed it. And then I went into my bathroom and there were two scorpions. And I'm like, this kid, <laughs> this scripture, you know, okay. Okay, thank you, Lord. Just a little bit spiritual warfare before the live recording of Lion Roar from Zion. <laughs> and prior to that, how many times have we actually found us? I mean, we're in Jacksonville, Florida, right? How many scorpions? That's not, they're it's here. Not something you see. But no, it's not no, common. No, no, no. So anyway, I took my place of authority. That's said, right. Oh, no, no. But anyway, so, uh, Luke, uh, so anyway, there in Luke 10, 19, we see that Yeshua has given us all authority and power to trample over all the enemy and and all and nothing by any way will harm us so that's a prince that's a, a promise that we have he has given us his authority and the enemy doesn't want us to know this because as long as we don't know this then he can have take dominion over any part of our life and it's really important for us as a body, as a family, to know the authority that he's given us and to act on it, to use it. Mm -hmm. It's one thing knowing his authority, mm -hmm. but if you don't do anything with it, well, then it, get, the fact that he gave us his authority, well, then we're not using the power that he gave us. Yeah. So we're supposed to, we talk a lot about demonstrating. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got to act on it, mm -hmm. faith and act on it. So, and then um, in Ephesians six ten. You know, when you when you said um, authority, and we're talking about the family, you, you you see this interesting connection because the father of the house delegates authority to the different family members, right? Mm -hmm. So you so dad, when he was gone, he always said, "You're the man of the house." Yeah. Well, that sounds great. Like, okay, I'm the man of the house. What I say goes, but with great responsibility. Yeah. Then you get authority. Mm -hmm. There's responsibility connected to authority. Mm -hmm. So you are yes. uh, responsible mm -hmm. as a family member in the family of God That's right. to demonstrate that. Mm -hmm. And so my dad was placing the mantle of making decisions at a very young age to make sure that everything was good. And I, I think I did a good, a good <laughs> job. You did a very good job. But it was my father delegating authority to me to make sure things were in order, cutting yes. the grass, you know, all those kind of fun things, helping nice. clean up the dishes. Yes. He always said, take care of your mom. So we would have tea time and yes. together. And you always have. So, you still do. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but uh, to encourage you, like, well, what authority have I begun? You're in the family of God. If you've confessed Jesus as your Messiah, you have authority. And as my mom is walking us through what that is, but you do have it. And you have the responsibility to demonstrate the authority that has been placed upon you because that's what a family is. That's right. You had a responsibility. You had authority in the household mm -hmm. that if Joel and I were going this way or the, and out of alignment with the rules of the house, the instructions that mm -hmm. dad put in place, you had the authority to bring correction. This is the wrong way. Mm -hmm. This is what's supposed to happen. And it's the same spiritually too. We have authority. We've been delegated and put in a position to demonstrate these elements of the kingdom. And if we're not, I would, I would dare say that we're in direct disobedience yeah. to mm -hmm. the rules of the house. Oh yeah, right, definitely. Because um, he's looking for us to, you know, to, we're his body. Mm -hmm. Yeshua, Jesus is the head right. and we are the body parts. He's seated next to places. you know in heaven and uh he's given us he has transmitted that authority to us mm -hmm. uh, to use and so and we have a responsibility to use it so in ephesians six ten, um this here it says be strong in the lord be empowered through your union with him draw your strength from him that strength which is boundless might and provides and this uh in this scripture sometimes people think well i got to be strong in myself no this scripture oh, is pointing Lord. us to to be strong in him and hit the mm. power of his might to depend on his power 
in us to be strong in the Lord, not in ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then um, I want to share that the, the value of the authority that he's given us, you see, it, it's, it depends upon the force behind the user. You have to realize that God's given us his authority. God himself is the force behind the authority that he's given us. Mm -hmm. So when we walk in his authority, that puts him on the scene. Yeah. And, um, and, how, and again, I want to say, how much authority did Yeshua say he gave us? All. Just a little bit? All. He gave us all authority. And okay. then in 1 John 4, and you know, it's interesting when you say like the power behind it. So you think about a lamp. A lamp can't do anything unless it's plugged into power, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. that lamp almost can like represent us. Like without us being plugged into the right source, wow. we're not going to light up and we're not going to fulfill what we're supposed to be doing. So likewise, that lamp gets its fulfillment, but only when it's plugged into power. And the authority, the power that we've been given, He is our source. That's why getting into this... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every day, knowing your authority, this is the source. Mm -hmm. Knowing where um, our help comes from, your, your, right. your, the power, the authority, everything that you need for life and godliness is, is in Him. And He's put it into text so that it's constantly for us, so that we don't really have an excuse mm -hmm. That's to right. say, oh, yeah. well, I just didn't know. No, we have to stay plugged into Him. That's right. <laughs> have our quiet time every day and have our face in His Word, renewing our mind mm -hmm. and the power of His Word. And so in 1 John 4, He says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome the world, mm -hmm. because greater is He that is within us than he that is in the world. Sometimes... Some people, when they're praying, they think that God is far away. No. What does this say? He's within us. Mm -hmm. Greater is He. Greater is He that's within you than anything of the world. And that's where the power and the source is. And th from that, that helps you to overcome any situation. I mean, because things happen mm -hmm. in life. There's crisis that happen. And, and just draw on the fact that He's inside of you. And mm -hmm. in 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 16, the Lord says that I will walk in them and dwell in them. I will be their God, mm -hmm. which means that he lives in us. I like the translation that says he, he makes his home in us, his, his abode in us. Mm -hmm. I love that. So just think of that, that God is inside of you. You have the Holy Spirit and Jesus. And you have all that power working inside of you. And he lives with us in every crisis of life that we um, that attacks us in life. You have to realize that the greater one lives inside of us. And as we look to him, he will illuminate to our minds what we are to do. Like if a problem comes up, you just you run to him. What what am I supposed to do? And just pray to him and he will illuminate. He will bring Many times I've prayed and I'm like, okay, this came up. And suddenly he will illuminate a certain scripture. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. word is exactly what I need for that yeah. Yeah. situation. Yeah. And there's such power in his word. And when I'm like, whoa, that's exactly. And then you just feel, it, you know, and the Holy Spirit just rise up within you and there's mm -hmm. strength to just overcome any mm -hmm. obstacle, you know, that comes. And so. It gives us the strength of the power to rise up over the problem. God will illuminate a certain scripture in his word, the exact word that you need at the time for any problem that you're going through. And then in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, talks about that Jesus has transferred his authority to us to use. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. You can look that mm -hmm. up. I don't have time to look it up. But Yeshua has transferred. He's already transferred his authority to us to use every day. And then Ephesians 1, 22, Yeshua is the head and we are the body. And there's more on that. But that's really important. Really read on these things and meditate on them. He is the head and we are the different body parts. And he needs us to fulfill and to do his great plan that he has in the earth. 
Mm -hmm. which our prayer is every day, your kingdom come yes. and your perfect will be done. And mm -hmm. we're just so thankful that the Lord, he has a great plan yeah. mm -hmm. and he, through us, wants, it will yeah. perform yeah. that plan. Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, in Ephesians 2, uh, 5 and 6, says that he has quickened us he has made us alive. He's quickened us. He made us alive. And that we sit together with him mm -hmm. in heavenly places. There's a lot in that, but I don't have time. But next time, maybe I'll have more time. <laughs> I love that you hand wrote all your notes. <laughs> Usually I have everything on an iPad. And you... Uh, meticulously wrote out well I, i'm i'm old-fashioned i don't <laughs> i'm uh, technically challenged just to say <laughs> and then in uh first corinthians 12 12 for just as the body is a unity and yet has many parts and all the parts through many form only one body we are one body so it is with yeshua the anointed one for by means of personal agency of the Holy Spirit, we are all, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, baptized, or bab we are baptized together, united together into one body and all made to drink of one Holy Spirit. I just love that. Mm -hmm. You know, the Lord created us because he wanted a family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so he's made us one body to work together. We all have important parts to do. That's Each right. part is very important and critical mm -hmm. for us all to be working together. And then, um, let's see, and then 27. Now you have collectively and in Yeshua's body and individually you are members of it and each a um, distinct part, which is in his own place and function. I already said that, but anyway, <laughs> just wanted to be sure that I got Say that covered. Yeah. And then in John 14, 12, moving, oh, moving right along. Okay. That's where I was going to close this out with. Mark. Okay, all right, you do it. She's John got 14, the whole 12. Bible. She <laughs> <laughs> Highlighted. She's got the whole, I love it. Literally, so I have a Bible that's uh, special to me, this NIV, that was given um, from grandpa oh. and it, it's like underlined with highlighter and it's over and over and over but um i thought this would be the great way to close us mm -hmm. um john 14 12 because a lot of times it's like okay i've been given and delegated authority to mm -hmm. but what does that look like and i think it's really laid out plainly right here in mm -hmm. john 14 12 you want to you you go okay all right john 14, 12. Yes. And you realize okay. the difference, right? I have the real big Bible and she's got the same. <laughs> <laughs> John 14. Okay. I assure you, and most solemnly, I tell you, if anyone steadfastly believes in me, he will himself be able to do the things that mm -hmm. I do, and he will do even greater things than these because I go to the Father. Amen. Praise God. Praise yeah, God. and that's a great way to close and just share that as we are to demonstrate what Yeshua did for us, we see his example constantly healing, praying over the sick and seeing them recover, praying over infirmities, children. I mean, it, it's all throughout the new covenant. And the authority that he's given us, he says that these are the things that you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So like when I was sharing um, a, a testimony that, you know, their, a neighbor wanted prayer for their child and we immediately prayed with them right there and then. Mm -hmm. And then a day and a half, they came back home because their, their child, I mean, it went from a very a bad miracle. situation yeah. to a, a good situation. Mm -hmm. And it's all because we're just doing what he's called us to. That's the authority. And Jesus has said, I now give you the authority to do these things in my name yeah. so that when we pray over people in the name of Jesus, yeah. be healed. Yeah. That's the authority that he's given us. And we're supposed to pray yeah. and demonstrate the kingdom. Yes. He said, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Yeah. So we're obeying the word. We're obeying him. Amen. And he shows up. He does. <laughs> every, it's amazing. Every time, yeah. you know, we don't always understand how he works and the answers sometimes don't come exactly how we're expecting to, yeah. but he always is faithful to his word. I encourage you to take this message, the authority that you have in Jesus, just saturate, let it 
focus on it, think about it, and we hope you have a wonderful evening with you and your family. God bless you. Fridays are for family, for fun, for memories, for laughter. And for our family, Fridays are for coming together around the table in remembrance of King Jesus. We invite you to pull up a seat at our table. In partnership with Wilbur Ministries, stream Shabbat in your home every Friday at 6.30 p.m. Sign up for a subscription to Awakening TV for access to on-demand episodes of Shabbat in your home and watch anytime. From our family to yours, Shabbat Shalom. family, are you looking for a church home? A place for worship, for fellowship, for fun, and for taking your walk with God to the next level? We invite you to join Celebration Church. With locations around the world, we are one house with many rooms. For more information and to find a location near you, visit www.celebration.org. We are so glad you're here. The Whole Story Reading Plan, in partnership with The Bible Project, unlocks a new perspective of Scripture. Through The Whole Story Reading Plan, readers are taken through the Bible chronologically in one year with daily passages, prayers, and videos from The Bible Project to help you understand context, themes, and the complete overarching story. Discover the Bible in a whole new way at thewholestoryreadingplan.com. Women, the Bible has more to say about them than you've probably been led to believe. It's kind of messy drama in the Bible right now. It's it's a hot mess express. This lady had her half-brother's baby. And on Awakening TV's new original series, Women of the Bible, you will get a not-so-average history lesson about some of these powerful women that have made an impact on all of humanity that we still feel today. The creator of the universe created you to mirror him. Stream Women of the Bible only on Awakening TV. Remember all of the things that God has brought you out of. Think back to where you was five years ago. Even when the moment is paralyzing, my perspective can be right. Faith is the action. Hope is the anchor. Moses understood there has to be something beyond the veil. I want to experience the presence of God face to face. God has been with me. He never left me. He never forsake me. He was with me in the mountaintops. He was with me in the valleys.